Yo, 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 Steve Burson coming at you through the microphone. You already know what it is. Welcome to another segment of... Ooh, ooh, show it off, show it off, ooh. <laughs> Three Minute Thursday, let's get started. So the question that I'll be tackling today is, what is the NCAA and what is the difference between Division I, Division II, and Division III? So generally speaking, NCAA divisions separate schools by the level of competition and the resources that their athletic departments have. So based on this, Division I offers the highest level of competition and has the highest budget. And Division II is a little bit lower and Division III has the lowest level of competition and the lowest budget from their athletic departments. But this is not black and white. There are Division III teams that are better than Division II teams. There are Division II teams that are better than Division I teams. So the purpose of separating competition in these three divisions, Division I, Division II, and Division III, is to create parity and a more level playing field in intercollegiate sports. It creates a more level playing field because it gives smaller schools with fewer resources the opportunity to still compete for a national championship. Division I schools have the biggest student bodies, the largest athletic budgets, and the most athletic scholarships. There are more than 350 schools that field more than 6,000 teams, providing opportunities to more than 170,000 student athletes. Ivy League institutions are Division I, but they don't offer athletic scholarships. About 300 schools in Division II, and Division II schools still offer athletic scholarships, but there are fewer scholarships than in Division I. Full athletic scholarships are more common in, in Division I. Most Division II athletes receive partial athletic scholarships. Compared to Division I, athletic budgets are smaller in Division II. While Division I schools often travel nationally to compete, regional rivalries dominate the schedules of Division II. What may surprise you is that Division III is the largest of all the NCAA divisions. In Division III, there are about 444 institutions and more than 170,000 student athletes. A key difference in Division III is that there are no athletic scholarships. However, a majority of the athletes are on some form of academic or need-based aid. In addition to that, there are shorter practice hours and less travel for games in Division III. In Division III, the emphasis is on the value of competing in sports to the participant. There's less of a focus on generating revenue or creating events for spectators. It's more about personal pleasure and keeping people that were athletes in high school still competing as athletes in college. It's important to note that just because a school is in a lower division, it doesn't mean that its student body doesn't care about sports or that the school is not as concerned with its athletes. Many Division II and Division III schools have passion fan bases, especially in the high-profile sports and for teams that regularly compete for championships. 